For a whole month, I talked about the best moves in Pokemon. Except for Gen 8. I pointed this out in the Hazards video, but Stealth Rock was pretty definitively dethroned as the best move in Pokemon. Of course, this is because of Heavy Duty Boots nullifying their effect. So, how do you beat Heavy Duty Boots then? Knock Off, of course, which has become the new best move in competitive Pokemon. So, what about before Gen 8 then? What is the history of Knock Off, and how did it become my least favorite legal move in all of Pokemon? Pokemon. Knock Off doesn't exist in GSC, so why am I even mentioning it? Well, it's because a variation of it exists in Thief. Now, Thief sucks in every other generation, but there are a few key things which help keep it relevant. Firstly, every Pokemon carries leftovers. Unless you find a low ladder player using Miracle Berry or Berserk Gene, it's because of this that the reward for using Thief is huge, as unlike other generations where you could potentially be choice locked for using it on the wrong Pokemon, in GSC, your reward for using the move is not only huge, but guaranteed. But why go through the trouble? Well, that's a great question. This is because using Thief forces you into not using an item, which makes the user far less durable before using it. This inherently makes Thief very risky, but for previously mentioned reasons, the risk is often worth it. This is because leftovers are easily the best item in the game. Removing them off a Pokemon is like stripping them on the street. It's shameful for a Pokemon not to use the item, as it helps every Pokemon survive hits they otherwise couldn't, and force aggressive players to not have the item heal infinitely. Not only that, but Thief also helps steal Narowak's Thick Club, which turns it into a sitting duck. Despite this, you don't gain anything else outside of that. It's for all these reasons that despite not being as good as Knockoff, Thief is still considered a great move, mostly due to how every circumstance around it makes the move all the more useful. So with the explanation for the move's usefulness done with, we can now discuss the users of the move. There's only two Pokemon who have the move recommended for use on the Smogon website. The first of these being Jinx, who loves the item removing effect, given how offensively inclined it is. Despite this, it has to compete with Substitute and Nightmare for its fourth move slot. That seems to not matter though, as the uniqueness of Thief alone gives it a lot more usage than those other moves. The same can't exactly be said for Mistrevious though. For it, it has to compete with Protect Hypnosis and Confuse Ray for its last move slot. And although Thief is used more than the latter options, Protect is generally preferred as keeping Mistrevious healthy, for spin blocking is generally more important. So those were the main users of Thief. Everything else I will be discussing then will be Pokemon who have niche applications of the move. Exeggutor rarely uses Thief. However, it can help it, as Thief lets it 3 at KO Zapdos with Psychic, meaning that it doesn't have to burn an explosion to take it out. Despite being relatively rare to the point where Smogon doesn't even bother mentioning it, the 18% usage of Thief on Gengar is nothing to scoff at, with it being useful for the same reasons as Jinx. Smogon mentions the possibility of Thief being used on Skarmory, but I think replacing any of the four moves on its impeccable curse set would mean that you're not even using the Pokemon correctly. Do not run Thief on Skarmory. For previously mentioned reasons, Thief completely fell off in ADVOU. The main reason for this being that it's outclassed by the newly introduced knockoff. And unlike GSC, you couldn't guarantee that the item you'd be stealing would directly benefit you, as the newly introduced Lumberry and Choice Band were on quite a few Pokemon. It's for this reason that GSC has been the only time you'd ever see the move in OU. With this, the community wanted a replacement, and found it in knockoff. In the third generation, knockoff is a special dark type move with 20 base power which removes the opponent's item. Despite the power being far lower than Thief, it's a significantly better move as you get to keep your own item. Something of note to mention too is that knockoff doesn't remove the items of Pokemon with the sticky hold ability, but in Gen 3 that doesn't really matter since Muck and Swalot are far from good Pokemon. Also, for anyone wondering, the 1.5 times damage boost of knockoff is still in effect, even if it seems pointless given the move's low base power. With what the move does cover, then we can now talk about the Pokemon who use it, and why none of them are good. Normally I only cover OU Pokemon, but I feel the need to discuss the UUBL Pokemon with the move, as they're all we have. And they all have their niche in OU specifically because of knockoff. The reason being that the item removing effect is huge for both breaking stall teams and abusing the team style yourself, as removing leftovers off an, an opponent makes them far easier to wear them down, especially in ADV where reliable recovery is so rare. 
There are four UEBL Pokemon with knockoff, and one of them is Kadabra. Man, ADV tiering is really weird. I say this because one of those four Pokemon is Alakazam, who is hard to fit given how it's walled by Tyranitar and Special Walls, and contributes nothing to a team defensively. Not only that, but knockoff is also very hard to fit on it. Sure, it can be used to annoy Blissey, but then you'd be missing out on Calm Mind or a crucial coverage move. In that case, the Pokemon who actually benefit from it are Armaldo and Hariyama. Armaldo isn't very good without it. The Smogon analysis mostly just talks about how good knockoff is on it, and doesn't really give another reason to use it. Sure, Hidden Power Bug and Oko Psychic types, but its typing is just awful for a defensive Pokemon. Pair that with its lack of reliable recovery, its vulnerability to spikes and toxic, not making up for its sandstorm immunity, and you have a very lackluster Pokemon. In that case, Hariyama proves a bit more useful. Fighting isn't a great typing, but it's f still better than Armado's, despite its sandstorm vulnerability. Yeah. Pair that with the great coverage of Fighting Rock and Ghost, and you have a great knockoff user who can force aggressive play from the opponent, and can even be threatening in its own right. Despite this, it is still pretty flawed, being harder to fit on teams for pretty much the same reasons as Armaldo. <laughs> There weren't many changes to knockoff in Gen 4. The only major one is that it would become a physical move, but it'll take about a decade for that to actually mean anything. The pool of Pokemon it doesn't affect also increased though, with those being Arceus and Giratina Origin due to Multi-Type and Grisius Orb respectively. Despite this, it doesn't mean much for this video as we aren't discussing Ubers to begin with, where Arceus is outright banned and knockoff isn't even all that common to begin with. As for Sticky Hold, one new Pokemon got the ability and Gastrodon. Unlike other other users who are useless in OU, Gastrodon actually has quite the notable niche in OU directly because of Sticky Hold. As the biggest reason to use it over Quagsire is that it wasn't affected by knockoff, which transformed many of the passive knockoff users into setup bait, as they can no longer pressure it. This is what makes Gastrodon such a surprisingly good answer to stall, as with enough curses, it can easily end games. When it comes to knockoff users though, they're significantly better than they were last time, which means that you'll be seeing the move far more often. I say this even though the quantity of good Pokemon who use it is still so low. That's how good the move is. The most well-known user though is easily Clefable, where its use of knockoff is what propelled it to the top of the viability rankings. Before Clefable was discovered, Blissey was once the preferred special wall. The best way of beating Blissey was of course through slowly whittling it down with passive damage. Not only that, but Blissey was very passive, especially if it didn't use Toxic, which it usually didn't as Thunder Wave was generally better for support. This is why Clefable is so good, as it ignores those weaknesses. Magic makes it immune to passive damage while knockoff stops it from being passive, as it can now scare out Pokemon who don't want to lose their item, and cripple Pokemon like Bronzon and Swampert who are near useless without leftovers. Another similarly great knockoff user is Empoleon, who can take Bronzon and Jirachi's role as a specially defensive steel type on slower team styles, so that it can guard Clefable and Skarmory from Draco Meteors. Another good application of Empoleon is that it requires Latios to run Thunderbolt to break past it. Of course, knockoff is made the cherry on top, so that Empoleon will be seen as a very good and underrated wall in DPP OU. Despite not being common, Gliscor can use knockoff on a stall breaker set to further annoy walls, although the coverage of Ice Vein is generally far better. That's all though. So now you know that a move doesn't need wide distribution to completely shape a metagame, as knockoff is a fixture in DPP OU. Slight alterations were made to knockoff. It can now remove Grissius Orb and items from Pokemon with the multi-type ability. Instead, it can't remove Grissius Orb off Giratina specifically and plates off of Arceus forms. Along with this, the move doesn't affect Genesect holding drive items. It's for these reasons that knockoff isn't nearly as useful in Ubers, but in OU where they don't exist, it is once again excellent. As for Sticky Hold, it's something that doesn't need to be worried about, as a Selgor and the Ubers band Trubbish aren't seen in OU. You, and Gastrodon will exclusively run Storm Drain throughout the rest of the generations. To add insult to the injury, no new Pokemon have gotten Sticky Hold since Black and White. To buff it even further, it now even removed a Pokemon's ability to regain their items through Recycle and Harvest, which I could only see being used in Little Cup where berries are far more common, but it is still interesting to mention. So now left without even one check to the move, Knockoff would once again prove its excellence in OU. Despite this, since the move was only good on walls or stall Pokemon, the only Pokemon to even use the move would be Ferrothorn. But don't let that fool you, as it is 
excellent. What Knockoff does is turn what is otherwise such a passive Pokemon into an extremely threatening one. Knockoff not only helps it in the Frothorn Ditto, but it also discourages Breloom and Gliscor from losing their Toxic Orb, along with Heatran and Thunderous Therian from losing their leftovers, the latter being especially huge, as they're some of the best Frothorn checks available. It was this innovation made to the Pokemon, which is part of why it's so overwhelmingly broken. And that was before the knockoff buff. Speaking of which... I've made it apparent that I think knockoff was once a pretty cool move. It was used for utility and had low distribution, which is precisely why it was so cool whenever a Pokemon did make use of it. That all changed in Auras though, where the move was buffed and the distribution was considerably increased. This came through a buff to the move's base power. 65 doesn't seem like much, but when combined with the once meaningless 1.5 times damage multiplier, makes it one of the scariest offensive tools available to any physical attacker. This was only compounded by how Steel types would no longer resist Dark type moves as they did in prior generations. Despite this, one mechanic did prove to balance the move. That, of course, being the orbs. Uh, jokes aside, the Primal Duo weren't the only new Pokemon affected by knockoff's damage boost and item removing effect. That group of Pokemon being the insanely strong Mega Evolutions, which were required on every team anyway. With that all said then, let's talk about the many new Pokemon who now use the move. Azumarill uses it on every set. Its most frequent use is on its belly drum sets, as its stabs are often good enough to the point where knockoff is mainly just used as a utility off that can severely dent the Amoongus and Frothorn, who would otherwise wall it. On the less do or die Choice Band and Assault Vest sets, though, it can afford to run Superpower over it, with it being good at beating Frothorn with the cost of Amoongus walling it. Despite this, the utility and better overall matchups granted still make Knockoff worth it in a lot of cases. Bisharp needs a strong stab move. It would be stupid for it not to run Knockoff. On Stealth Rock with Fable sets, Knockoff can be used as a utility option over Thunder Wave. Meanwhile, Landorus Therian finds Knockoff to be a great option on its Choice Scarf set, as in situations where you can force a Pokémon out, being able to remove the item off whatever comes in can be sometimes even better than using U-Turn. Despite this, there are situations where the coverage of Explosion and Superpower are considered more useful. As for the offensive Stealth Rock set, Knockoff can make for some good extra utility that can sometimes be more meaningful than U-Turn's momentum or Swords Dance's game-ending potential. Mew is a great example of what a utility Pokémon looks like with its vast move pool, and since Knockoff makes for such good utility, it often makes use of it. Despite this, Knockoff is often its most disposable for of utility, so the move sees competition with the more offensively threatening Psychic. Mega Scizor faces the same coverage dilemma on its bulky Swords Dance set that Azumarill has. It either has Knockoff or Superpower. Superior only needs two offensive moves, so it can play around with a lot of utility. Knockoff is one of those moves, although Substitute generally seems more useful for scouting bad matchups, even though knocking off a Heatran's leftover sounds extremely satisfying. Tangrowth being the utility Pokemon absolutely loves knockoff. Thunderous Incarnate uses knockoff on mixed attacking sets as a defiant boosted knockoff makes psychic types unable to wall it as they would its traditional sets. Tornadus Therian, of course, loves knockoff on its assault vest set, but it also loves the move on offensive sets. On defensive Mega Venusaur sets, knockoff can be used for utility, although Hidden Power Fire lets it scare off. For Hawthorne and Leech Seed makes for some valuable chip damage and recovery. Remember what I said about Bisharp? Well, it also applies to Weavile. That's it, though. And thank the Lord! The amount of Pokemon who use the move is smaller than I remember, and even then, it is still such a long list. One thing that surprised me, though, is that the buff only really helped a few Pokemon. For the most part, it was the wider distribution that ended up making the move so common, as its utility is just as strong as ever. I'll wait to jump the gun on more observations until later, though. In USUM, knockoff would remain mostly unchanged. I say mostly because Z-moves were another item required on most teams which ignored the effects of the move. This helped to further balance it. However, knockoff was still an incredible move. Unless you were trying to use a Z version of it, 
Before we can get to the new or updated users though, we must firstly mention how Mega Scizor, Tangrowth, and Tornadus Therian haven't changed one bit. With that out of the way, Mega Alakazam isn't clambering for coverage by any means, so it occasionally uses knockoff. Azumarill now only runs Belly Drum and as such always opts for knockoff. Brawthorn returns to using knockoff, although it can only sometimes afford it. Kartana loves the power granted by Choice Band, as knockoff becomes incredibly scary with it. Meanwhile, on scarf sets, it can use the move how Landris Therian would, even if it faces competition with the functionally similar Defog. On Mega Mawile, knockoff is imperative as it lets it deal huge damage to the steel types who would otherwise resist its stabs. Pelipper only needs its stabs for its choice spec set, so it finds it easier to slot in knockoff there. Mega Sableye loves pulling hairs out of its opponent, and knockoff is part of how it does it. While no longer used on the utility set, Superior still loves knockoff on the choice scarf set, as its only real offensive tool is Leaf Storm anyway. When it comes to my verdict of knockoff in USUM OU, I'd say that this is the most balanced iteration since black and white. The move is still ridiculous, but Z moves were the perfect way of balancing them out, especially since any Pokemon can hold a Z crystal, allowing teams to more easily be built around the move. Hopefully, Game Freak doesn't do something stupid to ruin the balance! Oh god. Oh god, what have you done? Mega evolutions and Z-moves are gone now, why? The game is gonna be so much more lame now. Oh well, uh, that should be it, right? There's no way the removal of these mechanics would take something over the edge, right? Oh god damn it. Well, it looks like knockoff is officially stupid now. Sure, it was technically nerfed given how it can't knock off Zacian's rusted sword and Zamazenta's rusted shield, but the removal of Mega Evolutions and Z moves might have been the biggest indirect buff I've ever seen. That wasn't even the only one, as the addition of Heavy Duty Boots only made players want to spam knockoff even more, so that way they could keep their precious take chomp and OU. Uh, with all that preamble, then, how did these changes affect the metagame? Well, that's what we'll take a look at. First though, Bisharp, Clefable, Brawthorn, Mew, Tornadus Therian, and Weavile are all ch unchanged. Well, that's not entirely true. Tornadus Therian no longer needs knockoff on its offensive set, while Clefable, Brawthorn, and Mew run the move far more often. As for updates though, Kartana saw quite a large one, as it can no longer nuke a team with a Z-move. It's because of this that it now uses knockoff as its final move instead of a Giga Impact on Swords Dance sets. For the first time ever, Landris Therian highly appreciates knockoff on its defensive set. Rillaboom runs knockoff on every set. It's simply a great offensive option for it. Toxapex had to adapt, and it did so by running knockoff, although Scold is still very strong on it. Knockoff is a great tool for a pivot, and it's why Zera Aura always runs it. So, uh, do you see my point? This move is just dumb, and I think SSOU perfectly encapsulates that for me. Like I always say though, just because I get off on complaining about the tier, it doesn't mean that you can't like it. In fact, you're probably happier than me if you do. Now that you feel better about yourself then, let's get this video to a gamer poggery close. Yep. That's me. You may be wondering how I ended up in this situation. How did I release a video this week even though I'm juggling this channel with both school and my light novel? Well, it's because I'm putting less effort into the editing. Just because I've made the process less time consuming though, doesn't mean I want my videos to look worse. Hopefully this video managed to look just as good as any other video in the process. If this video does well, it'll be evidence to me that you like this approach. And that would make me really happy as editing genuinely isn't fun. I often have too many video ideas, so this higher quantity approach should also allow me to capitalize on them. With that said then, I hope you enjoyed this rant, and I'll be seeing you guys on whichever week I choose to upload.